So this is exactly what happens to a tire that runs excessive negative camber. Uh, the outside edge, this is the outside of the wheel is fine, the middle is fine. Even as far as this point is okay, no like abnormal wear, but once you get to the inside, where it's basically riding on this uh, inner lip of the tire, it just completely eats it away. If this would have gone just a little bit longer, it would have gone down to the wires. Um, actually, I had a flat. My driver tire was worse off than this, and I had a flat tire. That's what led me to actually getting two new front tires and correcting this negative camber. So the tire mounted up right now is a Continental, um, let's see, Extreme Contact Sport. And I went with these just because I really like the sidewall and the smooth transition to the tread. It just, it looks clean. Um, it's, it looks sporty and it's got a tread wear rating of 340. So it's uh, a combination of good grip and uh, should last a lot longer than the 7,000 miles I put on my tires with all the camber. Here we are with the uh, front tires mounted up and the uh, extra sidewall. It does look good. It is tucking just a little bit before it wasn't quite as uh, high up in the fender. I'm talking about like right here. Uh, before I do the adjustable upper control arms to correct the negative camber that's eating up my tires, um, I'm going to put it back on the alignment rack to see where I'm at right now to see how much negative camber um, it is now that ate up my tires in 7,000 miles because those tires should have lasted at least. 50 to 20,000 miles, uh, not 7,000. So uh, let's see where we're at. Let's see the uh, degrees. That's what I'm looking for because these aftermarket tubular control arms are supposed to correct two degrees of negative camber. So let's go see where I'm at now. So this is a lot to look at, but I'm going to break it down real quick. Uh, th this is factory specifications. It basically wants close to zero degrees of camber, uh, 7.5 degrees of caster. Um, and we come up here, camber is 2.8, 2.6, but these arms say they can adjust for two degrees of camber. They could add that positive camber back in there. So that'll basically put it within spec. And as far as caster, it wants it to be 7.5. And uh, as you can see here, I'm at 8.8, 8.7. Um, and it says it can correct for one degree of caster. So I need to set the control arms for the max caster adjustment uh, Negative direction and max positive correction So hopefully those two things put the camber and caster within spec and the toe is no big deal I can adjust that after the arms are in So these SPC control arms are unique uh, Because you could also adjust the caster typically in aftermarket control arms It only has camber adjustments, but this doesn't offset ball joints so you can clock it giving you positive or negative caster, which is important because I was one degree off. So um, it even comes with this diagram telling me which way to orientate the ball joints and how to offset it, uh, right side, left side, in order to give you a positive degree in caster or negative degree in caster, which I need the negative. So this is set up for the uh, driver side, front left. It's orientated to match this one here. So basically I have the caster maxed out to give me negative one degree. I'm going to have the camber maxed out to get me close to a positive two degrees in that you know, positive direction. And I go from there, install it and see where we end up. All right guys, so here's my uh, suspension after it's been assembled. Here's the uh, SPC tubular upper control arm caster set to give me some more caster back in. So you can see it's it's a little, this is the caster. This, this movement here, the forward and backwards, that's gonna be your caster. So this gives me some more positive caster back in. Um, I have it set to max camber, which the slot has the ball joint, you know, all the way out, because your camber, of course, is gonna be your in and out from the side point of view. Um, so yeah, I have it maxed out to give me the most caster, most camber. I need to get it back on the alignment machine, because messing with the camber caster always throws your toe out of whack, and before I even did this, the uh, toe needed fixing. So let me put the wheel on and uh, get this thing back on the alignment machine and see what we're, what we're looking at to see if we can get back in spec or at least close to it. Yeah. 
So already you can tell that the camber has added a lot more uh, flushness to the fitment before the tire would stick further inward from uh, this point of view here, it was kind of slanted inwards until I was eating up the inside of the tires. But with these tubular control arms, it's got better fitment, it's more flush. A lot of that camber has been taken out, but without really getting on the machine, we don't know how much. So let's go uh, measure it up and see where we stand. So without making any adjustments at all, camber and caster are in the green. I don't really like the difference between left and right, but everything, if it's green, it means it's within spec and the toe is really far out of whack, which is expected when messing with camber and caster. But uh, let me get this toe squared away, because sometimes that could also change your settings, and then see where we end up from there. And um, I might try and split the difference here and make it more even, but I'm really happy with the results of these control arms. They seem to have corrected my camber, corrected my caster and uh, toe is just a matter of adjusting the uh, tie rods. Okay, this is what we're looking at after adjusting the toe. Now I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can fine tune the camber by adjusting the control arms, because those are just easier to adjust than the upper ball joints, they're easier to access. So let's see if I can split the difference and get this. Di I'm looking at the difference, how it's 0 .6, 0 0.5, and 0 .12. I'm gonna see if I can make that as close to zero in the middle as I can, so it's uh, symmetrical and driving straight. So I was taking my time, trying to be a little greedy, trying to get it as good as I could, but I'm not the only one that works in the shop. I had a limited amount of time. Uh, unfortunately, somebody was in line. Actually, there was a couple people in line behind me for the alignment rack, so this is the best I can get it in the time I had. I was trying to, like I said, get the center, the difference left and right to be similar. Uh, camber, I believe, before I cut was like 0.6 different. Got the camber down to 0.1, but in doing that, the caster um, says 0.4, but really it's about 0.3. Um, so yeah, I mean this this is a lot better Than what it was before this was a disaster. This is a recipe to just destroy some tires really quick um, But these SPC adjustable control arms I Shouldn't have an issue with uh, tire life anymore But one thing to note is that with adjustable control arms like your typical ones that only have the adjustable ball joint You're not gonna be able to adjust the caster. There's nothing you can do about that the only way to get your caster back into spec is with the SPC control arm with the offset ball joint. Otherwise, all you're gonna be able to do is maybe get your camber back in spec, but your caster, it's just basically gonna be like, it is what it is. There's, there's nothing you can do about that unless you get these SPCs. So these are pretty much the best on the market. I highly recommend them. Uh, just the fact that I put on the machine and the camera caster was green um, tells me that they're doing their job. And they are awesome. No squeaks, no noises. Um, yeah, I'm really happy with the control arms. And if you're a fellow GS owner, I get a lot of questions about the brakes. Uh, the rotors are from a 2015 Lexus RCF. It's a 15 inch rotor. And the caliper is from a uh, Lexus LS460, but it's gotta be from an all wheel drive. And uh, the brackets, they're like these adapter type brackets. I think they're XAT Racing. Um, if I find it, I'll link it in the description, but it's a 15-inch rotor, 19-inch uh, rim is the minimum clearance. Typically, with this bracket, it's a 14-inch ICF and a two-wheel drive caliper, but I went with something really unique. I don't think anybody has this uh, set up, honestly, with a 15-inch rotor, uh, all-wheel drive, LS460 caliper. Um, pretty much the biggest brake combo I could come up with on this GS. Alright, if you like this video, uh, as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment below if you have any questions. Or, if you want to see this uh, Twin Turbo LS go into my Lexus IS300, uh, be sure to follow. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Later.